Hello there. Today I am in Ankara, Turkey. I would like to explain the reason behind the hyperinflation and currency crisis in Turkey. During the last six years, the Turkish lira lost almost 80% of its value against Euro and American dollar. Turkey is mostly dependent on imported energy and many uh, component materials. So, this currency crisis increased cost push inflation. Another reason behind the hyperinflation of Turkey is demand pull inflation. Due to customers expect that the prices of the products and services may increase in the future, they prefer to buy them today. And this situation causes demand pull inflation. The presence of the demand and cost pull inflation caused hyperinflation in Turkey. The central banks are in charge of money policies and preventing inflation. Therefore, central banks should be autonomous. The central bank in Turkey is autonomous. However, this is just on paper. Since 2016, Erdogan has assigned bureaucrats to execute his monetary policy. Erdogan claims that he is an economist and he has a new theory that high interest rates are the reason for inflation. Whoever has basic economics knowledge knows increasing interest rates slows down the economy and decreases inflation. While Fed, European Central Bank and many other central banks are choosing that way, Central Bank of Turkey is choosing the opposite and decreasing the interest rates with intervention of Erdogan. He admits that intervention as due to usually is forbidden in Islam religion and they will not use it as a tool. When financial markets reacted to this situation, Turkey found itself in a currency crisis, which consequently caused hyperinflation. The government tried to find new solutions which may not debate the economy theory of Erdogan. To prevent the volatility of Turkish lira, the government decided to apply a different method, which is a foreign currency protected Turkish lira savings account. This means that if you keep your money as Turkish lira, you may generate an income based on the current interest rate. Yet, if the currency exchange rate increases and exceeds the income of the interest rate, the government will compensate investors' losses. By using this method, Turkey encourages clients to keep the Turkish lira rather than the foreign currencies. This policy has been decreasing the domestic demand for foreign currencies while increasing demand for the Turkish lira. For now, this solution is working, yet it's costly for the national treasure. For seven months, it's co it costed about 85 billion Turkish liras, which is about 500 million dollars with the current exchange rate. This method sees the volatility of the Turkish lira. However, hyperinflation continues. According to Turkish Statistic Institute, the annual consumer price index in Turkey is 85%, while the inflation research group unveils it as 170%. Just to compare with another countries, the inflation rate in Germany is 8.5. In France, it is 5.6. In USA, it is 8.1, while the world average is 8.8. .8. Only few countries in, uh, accompany Turkey with double or three-digit inflation, such as Venezuela with 210%, Sudan with 150% and Argentina with 72% inflation rates. The creative method found for seizing the volatility of the Turkish lira hasn't been found for the hyperinflation. To seize the inflation in housing prices, they restrict the annual renter fee increase to 25%. Another way they are trying to fight hyperinflation is by prohibiting supermarket chains from marking up staple foods and increasing minimum wage. During the last two years, the minimum wage increased by about 135% in the Turkish liras. Yet it decreased on a dollar basis from $419 to $295, which is equal to 30% loss. Despite this increase in the minimum wage and other salaries, compared to dollar parity, it's always decreasing. And it's causing a loss in purchasing power. For 2023, government increased the minimum wage to 8,500 Turkish liras, 
which is about $455. Considering that 38% of the labor force receiving the minimum wage in Turkey, keeping the dollar parity constant is crucial to maintain purchasing power. Let's see if this amount will be depreciated against the dollar or not. Instead of increasing the interest rates, why has Turkey chosen this way? Is it only because of the interest restriction of Islam? Of course it's not. However, Erdogan uses propaganda to assure his conservative electorates that is the commandment and he will not increase interest rates. The truth behind this situation is different. Firstly, increasing interest rates will slow the economy, which may consequently increase the unemployment. Purchasing goods and services more expensive than normal or risk becoming unemployed. Which one will make voters angrier? Erdogan knows the answer to this question. So, before 2023 elections, even though hyperinflation is also causing a loss of voters for him, unemployment would cause more. According to, to the Turkish Statistic Institute, currently unemployment rate is about 11% and he's trying to overcome this period with minimum damage. Erdogan is caught between two fires and has chosen inflation over unemployment, which is known as Phillips curve in economics. Erdogan's Islam-influenced economic theory is not retainable in the long run, and it will create a large burden on the national treasury. Turkey does not have that financial resources to maintain this situation, and whether Erdogan stays in power or not, these policies will be changed. What do you think? Will these Islam-influenced economic policies keep Erdogan on power?